Hi my lovely people, welcome back to another fabulous beauty video. I have for you something super fun and interesting. I have a vintage makeup video for you. I am going to share with you vintage beauty products that you can still buy today. And these are beauty products that have stood the test of time, they have survived, they're still being loved, people use them still, they're still being produced because people want them. And these are beauty products that very prominent Hollywood, old Hollywood stars like Marilyn Monroe and Audrey Hepburn used. Not just them, many, many old Hollywood celebrities use these products. So before we start this video, I want to remind you once again that I have changed my upload schedule. I used to upload every Sunday, Tuesday, and Thursday at 9 a.m. Eastern Time. But I have changed the schedule to every Monday, Wednesday, and Saturday at 10 a.m. Eastern Time. I wanted to test this schedule out to see if it works better for everyone, for you and for me. It seems like many of you are still not realizing that I I switched schedule upload times. Now let's jump right into these fabulous vintage products. So I have here a basket full of fabulous vintage beauty products and I have been using them now for some time. I've been preparing this video for a very, very long time, months and months, I would say. So by vintage beauty products, I mean makeup, fragrances, and skincare items. You know, other beauty items that pretty much, you know, overall, all kinds of beauty items. I have some fragrances here for you as well. I know some of you really love to hear about fragrances and I know some of you love to hear about makeup as well and skincare. So I gotta tell you guys, there are some skincare items here that Audrey Hepburn and Marilyn Monroe used. So how do I start this? I think I'm gonna start with the makeup and skincare and then I'm going to do fragrances at the end of the video. So the first item I want to share with you is quite fascinating. I have in my hands the very famous foundation Marilyn Monroe used to wear. Yes, I do. Boy, is it something. So yeah, that's actually what I'm wearing on my face today. It is the Anita of Denmark Daydew Cream. So this was famously Marilyn Monroe's favorite foundation. You guys, do you see the packaging? It's very, you can tell it's from the 1950s. Um, very like simple, kind of like a, in a jar. Uh, I think this is what the packaging looked like even in the 1950s. There might have been slight differences, but it hasn't changed much since uh, that time. I mean, and this is still available today. Unfortunately, the only problem with this is of course, there are only three shades available, if I remember correctly, three or four, but I want to say three. And I am wearing pretty much the darkest color I could get my hands on. And this has a very prominent pink undertone, which is not my undertone. So it's definitely not a foundation that, you know, matches my, my complexion that well. But I pulled it off by using some bronzer, a little bit more bronzer to darken it up a little bit to match my skin tone just on the, um, the outer edge anyway, you know, just uh, make it look darker. It's not my exact foundation shade, but I gotta say it's better than I thought it was gonna be. I thought it was gonna be like white and pasty on my face, but it wasn't. So here it is. So I have it in the shade. So this is the darkest, darkest shade that I could find. It's in the shade Golden pink medium so that's the darkest shade that they had available so let me show you the consistency it's almost like a 
paste, like very thick. There's something, uh, something glowy about this foundation, even you can tell just from the top there. So I actually used what was on the lid. There was a, a quite a bit that was on the lid. I didn't actually put my brush in there. I just got the foundation off the lid. I did not have to use very much. It was like just dot, 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 done. Uh, a very li little goes a very long way with this foundation. So let me kind of show you a little bit of the consistency. consistency. Do you see that? It's quite thick. Let me show you how it's really not my complexion at all, but I made it work just for this video. Um, as you can see, it's several shades lighter than my complexion and it's got a very kind of prominent pink undertone, but do you see how much it covers though? This is a very high coverage, almost stage makeup like foundation. So this covers anything. I mean, I actually have a pimple on my face right now because it's, you know, that fun time of the month. Um, and you can't even tell where it's at because it covered it right up, you know. Um, it's like, I don't know, paste and it just covers everything up and it's like stage makeup. I mean, it makes sense. You know, she was on camera a lot, you know, in lighting and all that. So this must have worked the best for her at the time. I will say one thing about vintage makeup, actually. We think that we have it so good now. I mean, and we do. We have all these million, trillion choices for foundations and every other makeup item. And we all think it's so much better now. And yes, it is in a, in a way. But a lot of these products that I used really blew my mind because they're actually quite nice, quite good, and quite work quite well. I don't know about the foundation shade, but this foundation is had this like, when I first put it on, I had to powder it so it, the, the, the kind of the shine went away. It had this um, almost like a, not a mirror like shine. It had like this very beautiful, almost uh, glowy skin kind of effect. When I put first put it on, it had like a bit, not, I wouldn't call it dewy. It had like this, yeah, like healthy skin kind of vibe about it. Now, if I had like the perfect shade, I imagine it would really look nice. Um, you know, I'm wearing pink undertone when I'm a more of a golden kind of undertone person. Um, it just really, I mean, it covered pretty much everything. It's very high coverage. It works almost as a concealer too, so you don't really need a separate concealer. You can actually use it as a concealer as well. But surprisingly it doesn't look heavy that heavy on the skin so yeah it's still available today you can buy it on the anita of uh, denmark website or several other places i will link all these products down in the description box for you so my next vintage makeup item is right here in my hands this is quite interesting to me this is by max factor if any of you even know that brand? I didn't really know that about it. I kind of knew about it. I had heard when I was a little girl. I had seen something somewhere or heard it, but it's not something we talk about it a lot today or, or see a lot today, but Max Factor was actually one of the pioneer makeup brands of the United States. It was like the first brand, for example, if I'm not mistaken, to come up with concealer for example i believe max factor pan stick concealer it was like the first you know concealer that really worked and then the first concealer period that everybody used especially the hollywood stars the old hollywood stars used that uh for concealing so yeah max factor at at the time was quite innovative um so it's quite a very old, uh, still long-standing, st they still make makeup, a uh, brand that has stood the test of time. And I have a very popular product, uh, at least back in the day, from them here. It is the Max Factor Cream Puff Pressed Powder. Now, yes, here, I have it right here. Max Factor is a company since 1953, you guys. So yeah, here it is. So this product is probably just as old. This is the Max Factor's famous cream puff. Now, do you see this um, this uh, 
pressed powder. I mean, these are all, like even this foundation, they all kind of look like theater makeup. They're very kind of, uh, I guess, on the heavier side. They're definitely not meant for light coverage at all. So this powder is actually also what I'm wearing today. Again, not my right shade at all, but I made it work just for the sake of this video because back in the, the 50s, you guys, <clears throat> or before that, or even after that for a while, dark skin tones may, may as well have not existed. They didn't cater to darker skin tones. So, you know what I mean? So now here is the is the powder. There it is, as you can see, it's uh, several shades lighter than my skin tone, but it's to a point where I can actually make it work. So anybody even slightly darker than me, these products won't work. I think I'm the pretty much the darkest skin tone that can kind of make this work. These products work. So this powder, you guys, is so finely milled. It's actually very, 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 very silky to the touch. Here I was thinking, oh, the powders today, they are so cutting edge. They're so finely milled that you can't even feel anything. But you guys, these are silky too. This is so very well finely milled. It feels very, very nice on the skin, you know. Definitely gave a very good sort of blurred finish when I wore it. Yeah, it made me look a little ghostly because it wasn't the right shade. But... I was trying to look beyond that uh, about the coverage. It just blurred everything and gave me a beautiful sort of finish. So the cream puff was very famous in the 50s. So I'm feeling very proud of myself right now. I did some heavy research on this next product or products I should say. I remember when I first became obsessed with finding the truth, you know, <laughs> with this product. That was when I saw a video by Lisa Eldridge, the makeup artist who has a, a, a makeup line. Um, and she, on one of her videos, she was talking about how she bought um, Audrey Hepburn. So there was an auction when Audrey Hepburn passed away, her belongings, uh, there was an auction. Her family had, her two sons had put up an auction. And, um, you know, famously very, um, you know, wealthy people bought some of um, her makeup items and other belongings um, during that auction. And Lisa Eldridge had set out to buy her lipstick, the famous lipstick that was in that Cartier um, makeup case that Cartier made just for Audrey Hepburn. It's this gold makeup, I'm um, sorry, lipstick case with this beautiful blue sapphire on it. So that was like the lip lipstick case. I've seen that online, um, you know, even before this video. I, I knew about it. And then Cartier made it just for Audrey. And she was using it till the day she died. And there was a lipstick inside that case when she bought it. So she tried to duplicate, recreate the lipstick that was in there. There was a little, little bitty, little bit left in that case. You know, you had to really reach in there with the lipstick brush to get it. And she tried to recreate that, that shade and she came up with this lipstick shade called Go Lightly. It's no longer available for sale on Lisa Eldridge um, website anymore. She, it's discontinued. I don't know if she'll ever bring it back or not. But anyway, so Lisa Eldridge said that she knows what brand and exactly what lipstick was in that lipstick case. But she said that she's going to take that to her grave. That she's not going to wear it with and share it with the, with the, with the world. So, um, so they, so the rest of us, you know, unfortunate people wouldn't be able to know what that shade was. So I was very curious. I, 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 I heard that and then I thought to myself, I bet it's not that hard to find out what's, what that might have been in that lipstick case. And, and Lisa Eldridge said in that video, oh, many of you commented and said, oh, the brand starts with an R. The brand starts with an R. Because people were su suggesting that it was Revlon and the lipstick shade is pink in the afternoon. Famously, people thought that Pink in the Afternoon by Revlon was the shade that um, Audrey Hepburn used often. And actually, 
it was also the shade that she was wearing in the movie breakfast at tiffany's in that famous scene in the in the taxi so in that scene audrey tells her her love interest um hand me my pur purse will you darling a girl can't listen to that kind of thing without her lipstick and then she pulls out this uh this golden lipstick tube with a golden barrel and with a little golden band and she opens it and applies the lipstick so apparently people have been obsessed with figuring out what that lipstick was and what exact shade it was because it looks so pretty on Audrey so apparently this has been a quest I, I wasn't aware um, I kind of went down a rabbit hole and found all these uh, information about it so many people have come out and say oh it's pink in the afternoon by Revlon because Audrey Hepburn actually modeled did some uh, ad ads for Revlon back in the day um, many many different shades that we now know we will I will get to them here in a second it's, she actually was on like posters and ad advertisements uh, for different shades of Revlon lipstick Re Revlon nail polish too I think um, so people just famously apparently guessed that it was pink in the afternoon so I want to show you that shade right now so this is um, the shade pink in the afternoon by Revlon so this has now been around this shade has been around since the 50s okay so maybe 40s i have to look it up but anyway so this is what the shade looks like let me show you what it looks like so that's the shade right there now to me this doesn't look like a salmon pink now in the movie audrey looks like she's wearing a salmony pink like salmon pink this looks a little bit pinky pink but it leads seem to be like a cool tone almost lipstick I actually no it's not cool tone but it's definitely not exactly salmon I wouldn't call it salmon it's difficult for you guys to actually see the true color of this lipstick with these silly lights they always like kind of change see when I'm looking at it here it's different from what it looks like on the on the viewfinder here so I don't know so this is what people guessed that she was wearing in that movie well that's actually not possible well for one this lipstick didn't exist this shade this particular shade so the breakfast at Tiffany's movie was shot way before that so it's not only is it the wrong assumption but it's basically impossible for that to have been the shade so yeah that that's not the case then so there goes that theory so I actually didn't think it was pink in the afternoon in the first place so I kept digging here's the thing it wasn't all that difficult for me to figure out what it might have been because Audrey Hepburn very publicly famously talked about the fact that she absolutely adored Estee Lauder makeup she loved Estee Lauder she used their skincare she used pretty much all Estee Lauder makeup. Most of her makeup was Estee Lauder. And she loved Estee Lauder lipsticks. Duh. It had to have been an Estee Lauder lipstick. Not only is was the shade in Lisa Eldridge's that 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 Cartier case that she bought from the auction and the shade that was in there was an Estee Lauder lip, lipstick, which I'm 100 almost 100 percent I would say 99.9% .9 sure that it's Estee Lauder there's no doubt about it and and Lisa Eldridge said that no it's not a brand that starts with R and I was like yeah duh it's not because it's Estee Lauder that's why so it might have been the exact shade she was wearing in the Breakfast at Tiffany's movie the one that was in in the in the Cartier um in in the case or it could have been two different shades, but they're both, I can guarantee you, were Estee Lauder lipsticks. One from the Breakfast at Tiffany's and the one that was in the Cartier lipstick case. Okay, so now what exact Estee Lauder lipstick might, ha might it have been? Well, I did some super digging. And I hunted down the type of lipstick that it had to have been at the time in the in the early 60s which was 1961 is when breakfast at Tiffany's movie was released 
so it's pretty much 50s it falls under 50s really like 50s makeup and it had to have been lipsticks from late 50s right or I mean early 60s but really it would have been late 50s lipsticks and the only only Estee Lauder lipsticks or any lipstick I actually did a I confirmed my theory that it was in fact Estee Lauder for another reason I uh, because of another reason because the barrel in that video breakfast at Tiffany's the gold barrel that made this particular sound when she removed the lid it could have only been these ones that I'm handing holding in my hands I am almost 99.9% .9 sure now there was no other gold barrel lipstick that was skinny like the lipstick that she pulls out in the video seemed to be a little bit skinnier and taller or like longer than the average fat like thicker tube right um it wasn't the standard size it was see it seemed slimmer and seemed a little bit like 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 skinnier and it made when she opened the lid it made this particular sound and i was I, I kind of my jaw dropped when these arrived um, I bought these on eBay from you know a, a lady who who had these in the 50s and I, I mean like I said I did a lot of research for gold barrel lipsticks from the time there weren't any that matched that look that 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 look that was in the film breakfast at Tiffany's um, it, it just couldn't have been anything else but this right here in my hands these are the lipsticks you guys right here this is what Audrey Hepburn pulled out from her purse do you see this particular beautiful shine that like that strip of shine that goes down this lipstick that's exactly 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 what the lipstick that she pulled out in the cab in that breakfast at Tiffany's scene looked like they look skinny like these. these. These are skinnier than standard size, as you can see. See, this one's fatter. So these ones are skinnier. And I noticed I had to watch that movie scene a million times and slow motion, little by little, to confirm it. She kind of pulls it out really quickly, so it's really difficult to notice it. I had to pause, pause, and look. There was a band in that lipstick, too. There was a band like this right in the middle of the lipstick, so it was these you don't have to wonder anymore you don't have to you know uh to 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 be sad that lisa eldridge is going to take that secret to her gate grave i don't think it's a a big secret i think it's very obvious it was these lipsticks right here it was this type there's actually no name for this type of lipstick all it says is estee lauder ink and it tells you the shade name and it actually doesn't say what lipstick this was, what brand, I mean, what type of lipstick it was. You know how lip lipstick lines have different names? So unfortunately, it doesn't tell you like what it is. But, but this particular shine, I mean, I'm actually very convinced these are the ones because Lisa Eldridge's um, beautiful lipsticks that I have a lot of, I have a lot of them, I've done videos about them. I'll link them up here and down in the description box. Her lipstick tubes also have this sort of like shine that you see on this lipstick tube. So I'm sure she was inspired by this, um, this beautiful golden, very, very substantial, you know, these feel weighted, like they're weighted beautiful lipsticks. So that, that I'm sure was the look she was going for. Now as for the shade she must have used exactly in the film, I don't know, but I have a guess to make. Now before I guess, I, let me show you with you what, I, I can't use these lipsticks bad because they're very, very rancid now I'm sure. Um, they've gone bad. But here is a salmon color. This probably wasn't the shade she was wearing. Okay, it could have been. Uh, I don't know. It, it, it's very well possible at least. This is closer to the salmon color she was wearing in the in the movie. Although this one is not as pinky, I would say, as like a, like a pinky salmon as the one in the movie. So this is the shade Nectarine. I'm not going to touch it. I'm going to keep this intact. Um, these are not for use, of course, because they're like decades old um almost yeah like 70 years old so we don't want to we don't want to touch them um at all and here's another shade this one is called uh peach brandy 
another kind of salmony pink and I gotta tell you do you see how this is pinched like this I feel like also in that breakfast breakfast at Tiffany's cab scene her lipstick was I feel like pinched like this because when she was applying it you know how how this one looks like do you see that do you see that that sort of let me show you do you see that kind of pointy look it's kind of flat almost like pinched look like it's like this it's not your usual you know lipstick uh, bullet shape let me show you the difference do you see um, it's not the usual and it actually like the one she used on in the movie looked like flat like this even out of these two like this one has a different bullet um, uh, in here like shape and this one is a different bullet I'm pretty sure it was this type of bullet so there's a better chance that it was this lipstick um, even the exact shade this is peach brandy it's a very kind of salmony color as well probably not this shade I don't know it could be it's difficult to see but I'm very sure one thing I'm very sure of is that um, the barrel it, it was these lipsticks the, the barrel the, the, this this lipstick component that's the exact component that was in breakfast at Tiffany's I am 100% I could actually say with a lot of confidence that it was so I sold it for you guys you're welcome the big mystery, you know, the, the big, big uh, secret everybody's trying to decode and, and people are trying to take to the grave. Um, it's not that difficult to figure out given the fact that Audrey absolutely adored Estee Lauder lipsticks and these were the only gold barrels that are hefty like this. Uh, you know, good, uh, substantial, beautiful with that exact shine with the band like that that existed at the time across any brand. I mean, not just Estee Lauder, every brand. I looked everywhere. No other thing in this exact gold type of barrel existed. It had to have been this type of lipstick. And with the with the pinch bullet like that, it may not be peach brandy or the nectarine shade, but it was issued from this line of Estee Lauder lipstick. So you're welcome. I am very, very, very sure of that. It could have been this by the way a lot of people speculated that it could have been Estee Lauder other people a little bit more smart and who, who've done more research on this suggested that it could be the lipstick shade eccentric by Estee Lauder now that's this one right here you can buy these today by the way of course the Revlon lipsticks you can buy today pink in the afternoon which by the way the Revlon lipstick pink in the afternoon that I showed you earlier right here this actually was a shade Audrey wore just not in the movie breakfast at Tiffany's or not one she used in her personal life a lot but she was in a in an ad vintage ad for this shade she promoted this particular shade and some other shades which I will get to here in a second so she was in a in an ad for these lipsticks so she has this this shade has touched her lips she has worn it but it's just not the one everybody's wondering about anyway back to the eccentric shade that everybody's suggesting might have been the exact shade she wore that's possible so I bought myself eccentric by Estee Lauder today this is what it looks like and I actually got my name uh, engraved here which is really nice touch if you order on EstreeLauder.com you can actually get it engraved um, your name engraved now this is the shade eccentric that everybody's saying might have been the shade although I got to say I don't know because again this is just like pink in the ap afternoon it's not salmon -y enough it's not light enough to have been the shade she wore in in that cab scene in the movie breakfast at Tiffany's because she's got lighter skin than mine very she's she was very fair skinned and a lipstick shade like this would look even darker on her than it does on me and in the movie her lipstick was very like almost fluorescent salmon like very very light salmon right so it could not have been this particular shade uh, by the way these are magnetic it's not cool so yeah you can buy these today uh, that exact shade uh, but it could have been one of these vintage shades like nectarine or peach brandy actually it could have been very well peach brandy you guys this is very shade 
So, but it's definitely this lipstick line from Estee Lauder. It was a very light electric fluorescent almost peach shade that she's wearing in the movie. Like a salmon pink, fluorescent salmon pink, which is what these are, right? These are very fluorescent, very light salmon-y kind of coral undertone uh, lipsticks. I have a feeling it might have even be peach brandy. I don't know, but it's definitely these lipsticks. So yeah, so I solved the big mystery, the big puzzle, the big uh, question. By the way, pink in the afternoon is not the only vintage shade. By the way, the number for it is 4, 415 pink in the afternoon. This is still available. You can buy very much, very easily. You can buy from Ulta, by the way. Ulta has it too. I'll link everything down in the description box for you guys where you can buy all this stuff today. So the, this next one is also a vintage shade. This one is 440 Cherries in the Snow. This is also a shade that existed since the 50s. So this is what it looks like. It's a beautiful cherry shade, which is what I'm wearing on my lips right now. I absolutely love this shade because it's that beautiful, beautiful, hard to find sort of, um, you know, that cherry-ish, pinky red, okay? It's that sort of cherry pinky red that it's difficult to find that one right there. So that's what I'm wearing on my lips today, which complement blue tones really well because the undertone, undertone of this is blue. So cherries in the snow is, is one that is vintage. I know I had fire on ice with me, but I can't find it right now. Another vintage shade from this line, which I also have, I don't know, it hasn't made it down with me here. Fire on, fire on ice, fire, fire on ice, yeah. Fire on Ice is another red kind of shade that um, is also a vintage shade. Um, I really love actually this line of lipsticks. I was wearing this lipstick in one of my uh, one of my IG stories, and some of you asked what I'm wearing. So yeah, Fire on Ice is an uh, all shade. Cherries in the show, uh, snow is one, and Pink in the Afternoon. So yeah, definitely vintage products, vintage lipsticks you can still buy today. Those shades are like decades old since the 50s. So, um, oh, and also Eccentric was a shade that Estee Lauder made back in the 50s that you still can buy today. And I also have Marilyn Monroe's lipstick shade right here. This is again by Max Factor. This is a shade Max Factor made or created for Marilyn Monroe or to, to match Marilyn Monroe's red that she loved the most that she wore all the time. I would say it was a slight Kind of almost blue undertone red that Marilyn loved to wear all the time. It's right here Max Factor and this is called Marilyn Red. Yeah, it's called Marilyn Red and This is what it looks like. I actually bought this once and my son found it you guys and broke the bullet so I had to buy a second to it's really difficult to keep stuff away from my children sometimes. So that right there is the Marilyn Red right here, this third one here. This one on the corner, that's Marilyn Red. And this is famously the, the shade that she preferred to wear, the red she loved to wear. It's kind of not exactly blue undertone or warm undertone lipstick. It's kind of like right in the middle. So I have another product that you would never guess has been around, well, some of you will know, for over 100 years, actually, to be exact, over 150 years. Um, this has been a product that's stood the test of time and still people love and use a lot. You and I have used it for sure. It is a product that Marilyn Monroe used to use on her face. I'll tell you for what purpose. But it is none other than Vaseline, you guys. The good old Vaseline. This company has been around 150 years. It says 150 years of Vaseline right there. So this is like a, a petroleum jelly product, as you know. We've used it a, quite a bit. Vaseline, as you know, is petroleum jelly. So this is a product that sort of seals things in um, and seals keep things out go from going into the skin kind of acts like a barrier almost guess what Marilyn used to love using this product 
what what do you think she used it for do you see that sort of sheen so Marilyn at Monroe back in the 50s highlighter wasn't a thing like it is today you know how we have all these beautiful highlighters but she was such a original uh, innovative sort of uh, smart brilliant woman by the way I'll get into Marilyn Monroe another time in a different video but she's not who she you know was like on screen she was a very different person in in real life very very messed up person she had a lot of mental issues and stuff but she was very intelligent and very and definitely not a blonde and uh, she even had a video speak that they had to get rid of uh, she, she looked different from what she looked in the movies in in real life uh, originally but anyway she loved to apparently use Vaseline under her makeup so it's almost like a primer which makes sense you guys I mean if you think about what kind of primers we have today like silicone primers a lot of the times you know um, where you you know you have this sort of jelly like texture it kind of seals the pores so that the makeup kind of glides right on top and it keeps makeup from going into your pores and things like that and make the makeup last long guess what Ma Vaseline does exactly that so Marilyn came up with primer before primer existed really so she used Vaseline essentially like a primer and the reason why she used it maybe not because she thought it was gonna block her pores or anything maybe she knew that too but the reason why she used it is because it gave her under the makeup through the makeup it showed that when she wore Vaseline under her foundation it gave her this sort of beautiful healthy skin glow kind of finish with Vaseline under and I have noticed actually in movies Marilyn's face had this sort of sheen to it like this healthy glow about it like the healthy I don't know plumpness about it you know like the skin I think it had to do with a little bit um of course her skincare she had I'm sure a beautiful face like even in real life and skincare did a lot I'm sure and I am about to talk about her skincare so absolutely believe it so yeah so she used it because she used it in the place of of a primer and she also used it on top of her makeup on her cheekbones and high places all the high points of her face to give a highlighter kind of sheen so that's what I'm wearing today I'm not wearing highlighter like I usually do I'm wearing Vaseline you guys do you see that do you see how it makes my skin look like almost healthy and like skin like my 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 foundation so she apparently used Vaseline basically as a primer and as highlighter pretty much before highlighter existed so Vaseline you can still buy Marilyn Monroe used now I'm gonna get into the um, the skincare products so Erno Laszlo is a skincare brand that has been around for over 100 years since the time of Marilyn Monroe and Audrey Hepburn and guess who used that the the Erno Laszlo products Marilyn Monroe and Audrey Hepburn famously they adored Erno Laszlo skincare products they both used it they both believed very much in the May the skincare line and they swore by it and Erno Laszlo actually came up with a few products just for Marilyn Monroe and few products just for Audrey Hepburn so the first one I want to talk about the Erno Laszlo product is this one right here you see that seal that's quite regal looking uh, this one is Erno Laszlo neutralizer shake it tinted treatment is what it's called so this is famously a product that he specially formulated for Marilyn Monroe yeah it's actually for Marilyn Monroe now I I remember Marilyn probably had more oily skin Audrey Hepburn probably had more dry skin that's what I'm assuming just from looking at them um, on film so this right here this is like a toner that you shake there's like some sort of particles in there you have to like shake it if you don't it kind of separate so you gotta shake it it's in the name you gotta shake it it's basically a tinted moisturizer that kind of takes the color of your skin and it works with any skin complexion it's just slightly tinted it actually mattifies your face gets rid of excess oil you know before you do makeup if you want to get rid of like greasiness or whatever and 
you know, your pores to be like smoother. You know, you want to have that sort of mattified look if you're like really oily, you want to control your oils. This is the product for you. And I'm that, I'm definitely that. I have sort of like, I always had oily skin, but now it's becoming more combination skin, but I'm also acne prone. So this is a really great product for me. And it is basically, like I said, it's a toner. I don't know if I can even really show you anything. Really, It's not going to look like anything. But I don't know if you will notice that. The moment I put it on, see how it went shiny, but now it's turned matte. It, the moment you apply it to your face, it mattifies the face. Like, psh, oiliness gone. So, apparently this is a product on a last low specifically formulated for Marilyn Monroe, but then uh, made available to the mass market. Um, so yeah, that's something that he specifically made for her. And I have here something that she also used, Marilyn Monroe, I mean. This one is Erno Laszlo Formula 3 to 9 Balm. And this is what he created for Marilyn Monroe as a night cream. So it's actually, it has a balm uh, kind of texture. I have been using this, but I put it back in the the box for you guys. So this is what it looks like. Most of his creams have this sort of square tub with the lid. Now this, you guys, is the most rich and beautiful, luxurious cream. Uh, actually has a balm texture. So here's what it looks like in here. As you can see, I've used it quite a bit. Now this has got that balm texture, so I'm gonna use my skin there. It has a balmy, like balm-like texture, but it's somehow also light and super hydrating. Now, I, like I said, I'm acne, acne prone. I can never use a thick, moisturizing, nourishing, thick cream, which I die, I want so much to use, but every time I use anything thick that's not a gel-like texture, I get acne, I get pimples. This is the first cream that I've ever used that's full of nutrients and very nourishing and very thick, but yet also light somehow, that doesn't give me acne. It doesn't break me out at all. And you guys, I can tell the difference when I, when I actually take the time to wear this cream at night. It just makes you wake up looking like baby's butt, you know, like baby butt skin uh, in the next morning on your face. It has powerful nutrients for your skin. It has niacinamide, which is something you really, really want to have in your skincare. And also, I believe, uh, peptides as well. It has a nourishing formula uh, to, to hydrate, improve texture and overall appearance of the skin. It makes your skin look plump. It has like plant marine bioactives in, he, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the balm that's really good for your skin. It also increases skin's ability to defend itself against environmental stressors. Absolutely adore this. Uh, it's super expensive, however. Again, this was originally formulated for Marilyn Monroe. In the 50s, that is, it's now available for everybody. It also has a cream version. Now the balm is the one that he created with Marilyn Monroe, but there's also like a cream version of this, which is also really good. Absolutely, I swear by Erno Laszlo to no wonder Audrey Hepburn and Marilyn swore by this brand because it's absolutely fabulous. So another skincare item that actually Audrey Hepburn used to use is this soap by Erno Laszlo. It's called basically the famous black soap that uh, Audrey Hepburn used. This is by Erno Laszlo. I'm not usually into bar soap, you guys, but if the right ingredients are in them, I don't really care. So it, it's like a black soap and it has it's packed full of really good, you know, things for your skin and I'm assuming she had sort of like dry skin. So now this is what Audrey used. He also prescribed uh, a soap like this, say same shape, but it looks more olive kind of mustard looking color for Marilyn. I thought I ordered it, but it never arrived. Either I didn't actually order it or something went wrong in the ordering process. But anyway, that one was the one that Marilyn used and this is what Audrey Hepburn used. Um, it is a purifying soap, a black soap that's very purifying and it doesn't strip the skin of moisture but it unclogs pores without stripping the, you know, your natural oils or, 
you know, like good oils or, or or your natural moisture. It doesn't harm the moisture barrier. And then another vintage beauty product that you can still buy today is Elizabeth Arden's um, Eight Hour Cream. Now this is a moisturizer that a lot of Hollywood stars um, swore by. This is something Elizabeth, Elizabeth Taylor swore by uh, in particular. She wore this apparently and used this all the time. This is like this eight hour uh, cream by Elizabeth Arden. It's funny that they both have the name Elizabeth. Um, so yeah, this is like a skin protectant or whatever. This is almost like a uh, like a primer slash moisturizer or moisture pro uh, skin protector protecting moisturizer, um, kind of kind of to lock your skin, let your moisture in, and then keep the makeup out kind of thing. Um, so Elizabeth uh, Taylor apparently used this. This is very famous. It has this sort of salmony color gel. It's like a like a jelly kind of texture. I don't know if you can see it right there. So it, it almost looks like, you know, Vaseline, you know, like Vaseline kind of texture to it. So she apparently used this underneath her makeup um, all the time and, and it apparently really promoted healthy skin for her. It has a combination of like petroleum, you know, just kind of like Vaseline. And it also has vitamin E and skin soothing BHAs, beta hydroxy acid. So yeah, I can I can see it, you guys. Um, I have used this and I'm, I'm telling you, I feel like it does kind of have really good results. I haven't used it enough. I need to use this a lot more to really see results. But yeah, it has this sort of skincare kind of scent to it. But this product has been around since the 50s. And Elizabeth Arden herself swore by this. I mean, duh, it's her brand. But yeah, she came up with it for herself. It is um, a, a product that apparently people like to use on like planes and stuff to, to deliver uh, high moisture to the skin, keep it from drying. And it's also very soothing after like waxing and stuff. People like to use that too, even on legs and stuff. And um, it's also good for sunburns, uh, to soothe sunburns and make the sunburn go away. So it's like a very like super moisturizing skin barrier kind of moisturizer slash primer. So yeah, you can wear it underneath your makeup. I mean, look at this. I just rubbed it on my hands, you guys. Do you see how supple my skin just became? Because I just see right there. That's where I first initially rubbed it. It just, you know, it's very soothing. I can, you know, definitely see that. I mainly use it on my, my face, but I think it's really good for like dry patches like elbows and knuckles, you know, your, your feet. I'm sure it will work very well as well because the main ingredient is petroleum, but there are, there are salicylic acid, which is a beta um, hydroxy acid, which I think Elizabeth Arden pioneered salicylic acid use. I'm not sure. Don't quote me on that. So another uh, vintage skincare product that Audrey Hepburn swore by or wore uh, famously, you know, used is this, this product right here by Estee Lauder. As I said, she was a huge fan of Estee Lauder. She even wrote this letter to Estee Lauder thanking for, for their products, right? Um, it's a famously known, I mean, a lot of people know about that. No, maybe not everybody. So this one is the Estee Lauder Revitalizing Supreme Plus Cream. So it's right here. And this is the eye cream version of it. Uh, this is, yeah, this is the eye cream, I think. So yeah, the Revitalizing Cream by Estee Lauder. And apparently Audrey swore by it. There's a lot of really good expensive ingredients. It's for dry skin. It improves firm uh, elasticity, makes your skin firm, fights uh, aging. So yeah, she apparently loved this. This was like her anti-aging cream. So another product that I want to mention but I couldn't get a hold of uh, quick enough is Nivea cream. Now Nivea is actually something that I am actually um, uh, familiar with as well. As a kid, I remember my mom used Nivea. <laughs> so Nivea is actually popular to this day, you guys. There are several Nivea products that people to this day use. You guys are familiar with Nivea. Now the Nivea I know is the one in the blue tub. I will put a picture of it up here. It's very 
thick emollient rich cream it reminds me of the luxaton the um, the ultra rich cream it's very similar to that that texture nivea is a you know product that's been around forever i think it's like 100 years or more already also but today we all love know and love the nivea that come in those large tall bottles with a pump um, there's a new one that everybody loves. I will put a picture of it up here. I, I didn't get to buy one uh, fast enough for this video, but I've been meaning to get that for myself because I've heard so many people talk rave about it basically. So that's apparently very, very moisturizing that new version of Nivea and then the really old balm, like almost balmy, rich moly and cream in the little blue tub. They're all very, very, very good. Now, the last uh, skincare product I want to talk about is Pons. Pons, I don't know if you are familiar with the brand Pons. I am because I remember my mom, again, using it when I was a kid. Now, Pons Cold Cream um, is a product that, uh, you know, Hollywood, old Hollywood used for makeup removal. Now, you know, we all have all those makeup cleansing bombs today for double cleansing. You guys, double cleansing we all think is a new thing. No, 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 it's been around forever, okay? So Hollywood's, uh, old Hollywood starlets like uh, Marilyn Monroe, they did double cleanse as well. They used the Pond's cold cream. In fact, if you watched, ever watched I Love Lucy, you will see Lucy has on her vanity Pond's cold cream and the other Pond's products. So it was very popular in the 50s. So I have become very interested in this vintage stuff lately, you guys. So I got into this like vintage track and kind of went down this like rabbit hole of like finding all this vintage beauty products that I absolutely find fascinating. So Pond's Cold Cream. So yeah, it's a, apparently it's the original double cleanse uh, balm or makeup removal balm. Okay, so I... I think it's available now even at Target. So yeah, apparently works really well. And also Pons has different moisturizing creams too for, you know, different skin types that come in different like pastel colors. Like, you know, it's a white bottle, little tub with the, with the pink lid. And then there's the green lid. There's the blue lid, all different types of Pons products. So I wanted to mention those as well. I just don't have them physically, but I am actually going to... to just to have for fun, I want to try out Pons Cold Cream and see how it removes makeup comparatively speaking to today's makeup removal bombs. You know, I'm kind of interested in uh, finding that out and I'm definitely buying the, the either the modern version or if I can find the old version, the tubs of Nivea Cream. So yeah, I think now we're down to the fragrances, you guys. Anyway, this is Chanel number no. 5 and I have it in that special edition, like a... Uh, what was it that recently they released Chanel number no. five, like 100 years of Chanel number no. five. I think it's been around for 100 years. So this is what uh, the uh, special edition bottle looks like. I don't really use this because I kind of want to keep this as a um, collector's item. I need to buy another Chanel number no. five bottle. I'm not going to spray it. Oh God, I smell it right from the atomizer anyway. Oh, yeah, you guys know what Chanel number no. 5 smells like. I mean, it's been around for 100 years, you guys, okay? So this is a very famous vintage perfume, Chanel number no. 5. The ladies in the 50s, they swore by it. Whenever they wanted to smell sexy, they wanted to smell like a like a woman. They wanted to attract someone, you know? They wore Chanel number no. number no. 5 since 50s you know it's been um it's been a, a very very famous fragrance this is as you know a very kind of aldehydic fragrance it's a very powerful scent i'm not going to get into the notes and accords or anything like that because this video will be 100 years long if i did but you know what chanel number no. five is so marilyn monroe wore chanel number no. five famously and she famously said when in an interview when asked what she wore to bed famously she liked to go to bed in the nude she apparently didn't fall asleep very well when 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 she would go to bed in in clothes so she famously said chanel number no. five so that's what she wore to bed nothing else so anyway that's a famous uh 
interview from the 50s with Madeline. So this is uh, Chanel number no. five, been around for like 100 years. I believe I almost forgot this one. This one was created for Audrey Hepburn by the house of Kriegler, a prestigious, very old fragrance house. Um, you know, this house made fragrances for like JFK, you know, Hemingway, Audrey Hepburn, you get the idea. This is a beautiful kind of orange blossomy kind of, I think it's either African orange flower or orange blossom, like, you know, cit citrus florals kind of fragrance. It's absolutely beautiful, very delicate, very sophisticated, very elegant fragrance. So this one was created, so this one was created for Audrey Hepburn. Well, another fragrance that was created for Audrey Hepburn L'Entre D by Givenchy and this fragrance is also a delicate beautiful white floral fragrance obviously Audrey Hepburn liked you know white floral type of fragrances this also has like jasmine orange blossom that sort of florals you get the idea apparently if she um, said she didn't want you know Givenchy to release this fragrance to the to the public but um, Givenchy eventually did release it to to the, the public as well. Those are the super interesting, fascinating, super amazing actually vintage makeup and vintage beauty products that are still available to this day that you can buy that they've stood the test of time and they have worked for decades. So yeah, that's why they're around. So I hope you enjoyed this video and found it as fascinating as I did. Um, go ahead and do some of your own research and find some amazing products from the 50s and, and, and later, you guys. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please don't forget to give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already because it's very important for my channel to grow. And don't forget to ring the notification bell because if you don't, may as well not subscribe. They won't send you notifications. I will see you guys in my next video. Oh, by the way, don't forget the new schedule. Next video will be on Wednesday, 10 a.m. Eastern time. Oh.